Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Rich Pen 112A or the Sotar 2020, which one? Now this isn't a versus, I'm just gonna take you through two airbrushes, tell you my thoughts on both airbrushes, you'll see how they'll both perform, doing a bit of shading, we'll do some dagger strokes, some lines, we'll see how far these will go down, I'll do a pressure drop on these as well. We'll both run on with the same paint, same pressures, and we'll drop the pressures down and just see how both these brushes perform as I've got these two in my collection. The reason why I picked the Rich Pen sort of with the Sotar is they're both 0.2 mil needle and nozzle setups and they've both got the scallops out the top where your paint reservoir is. So they're sort of evenly matched on exact looks needle setups, so they're both detailed brushes. I've owned the Sotar now probably a month. I've owned the Rich Pen probably a year, but I've used the Sotar more than I have the Rich Pen. The Rich Pen's just been on the shelf and I've not really used it. I've just used it on a review for you guys on the channel, but it's gonna be nice to pick this brush up again because it is a very good brush. Now the Sotar, these have been around for quite a while. This is the Sotar Slim. 0.2, these have got a really nice trigger response on these brushes and that's what I like and that's what drew me to the Sotar was the reviews that people were saying that the trigger response is really good and it is, it's phenomenal on this brush as you'll see in a minute. The downsides to this brush, and I'll talk you through them now what I've just experienced, I gave this a clean and when you come to undo the chuck and this is why I don't like cutaway bodies and I don't like the design of this is where you have to undo this here which holds your needle you undo this to pull your needle out but I'm finding when you undo this it undoes that piece pulls that inner back the trigger drops out as you pull, pull your needle out so I don't like this bit where you slide the needle in and out the back I don't like the adjusters on the back of airbrushes full stop. So I'm gonna adapt this, change the rear body to a solid body and just chop the back of the needle off and make it just a solid body at the back and lose this at the back as well. And I think for me, on how I use airbrushes, it just makes it a lot better because I'm so used to just doing this. Unscrew that, you've got your chuck, you can do that with your needle. And then when you come to tension your needle, I just do that and I pinch and that's my needle in and just screw the back on. I'm so used to it with all the rare brushes and it just seems a little bit over fiddly with the Sotar. It's just, you don't need to have that trying to hold your needle in, then you're twisting this and then if you're going to take your needle out, you undo this and it undoes the whole mechanism inside, but you can't get this off without getting that out and taking that off. It's just too fiddly. But other than that, from there onwards, brilliant. So that's the Sotar. The Ridge Pen is very slick. This is probably the lightest airbrush I've picked up. It is really silky smooth body. These are basically eyewaters, the Ridge Pen. Uh, this is a 0 0.2. So this is the, the same needle and nozzle setup as the CMSB Plus side feed that I've got. Same front end as well, same trigger top. So it's like using the CMSB side feed, but without a cup or a side feed, you've just got your scallop on the top. Nice bit on the body at the bottom where you hold it. And it's just very, very light, guys. It's just a really nice, sleek, little compact airbrush that you can see everything around. So I'll hook these up to the airline. As I say, it's not a versus, but you'll just get to see what both of these point twos can do on the same paint and we'll drop some pressures in. So I'll hook the airline up, drop some paint in and we'll start with the Sotar. Now we're running 25 PSI. What I find with the Sotar is it just handles and performs. I've used this in previous videos when I did the side panels on the Lambretta. It is on the channel guys where I painted the Focus and I used this brush and I had no dramas with it. I just kept putting paint through it. It didn't clog up. I didn't get much tip dry with it. 
and it was just really comfortable brush to use and the triggers on these as i say are phenomenal guys so we'll do a little bit of shading on this and honestly the trigger response on the sotar i can honestly say is the best trigger response out of all the brushes that i own apart from my hns that i've had with the hack i think this beats the micron the cmsb side feed micron on trigger response it really is good atomizes the paint really nice beauty of these brushes with the scallop in the top i like as well it slows you down when you paint you don't waste paint because you can only get a couple of drops in the front you can see the whole of your artwork you've got nothing blocking your view and that is an absolute bonus when you're airbrushing because you can look straight down it if you're comfortable sitting to the side you can look that way you've got full view of what you are painting and that's what makes it nice when you paint it's the closest thing to having a pen in your hand is these ones with no cap um, cups to the top or on the side so atomizes really well a little bit a little bit of shading detail wise because you've got the trigger that is so responsive the sotar just gets ridiculously down guys on lines if you want to get like small dagger strokes and things like that this thing gets right down with ease absolute ease and the nice thing with this as well is you can run this on really low pressure and it just atomizes the paint without a struggle opaques transparents both on the golden range that i've used this brush coats with it brilliantly and it's nice that you can just chuck a paint straight in an airbrush and not worry too much about over thinning it and trying to sort it out. This thing just copes with it. On dagger strokes, atomizes really nice, fades out really well, atomizes the paint just brilliantly. It's a great workhorse and I'm really glad that I got one based on some of the reviews that have been on YouTube. So a big shout out to the guys that have reviewed these because that's what made me pick one up and I'm glad I did. You won't go wrong with this brush. You will hear a little bit of leakage of air on the seals here, they're renowned for it on the fronts. Little bit of beeswax, round the thread, screw it up, job done. Other than that, I've had no dramas, but I've not owned it long enough to see where the dramas could be, but that is just really fine, guys. You just touch this trigger and you are getting hairlines really really easy i find the comfortable spot for me on the trigger i don't like sitting over the top of it i sit to the top here and rest my finger on the top of the back and lock my finger to the body here and i can hit them hairlines every single time on the paint with that trigger is absolutely brilliant so that's the sotar 2020 slim recommended yes don't like this bit at the back i'm going to change that for my personal preference because i like to be able to just take the body off slide the needle out slide the needle in tighten the chuck up and have it as one sealed piece i don't like cutaways because sometimes on these if they don't locate and they're like that your hand is rubbing inside here i just don't like them on any of my airbrushes i'd rather have a solid body at the back like the rich pen it's just a lot more comfortable and easier, but a brilliant brush, guys. So have a look out for the Sotar 2020. I highly recommend it for a detailed brush. They are phenomenal, they really are. So I just blast that through, and then we'll move on to the Rich Pen and my thoughts on the Rich Pen. Now, when I picked this up, I got this one before the Sotar, and the reason why I picked this up is because I came from Aerograph Super 63s when I first started out and they have no cup to the top. I have the ones with the scallop in and that's what made me jump to the Rich Pen thinking, oh, that'd be nice, let's see what it's like. So the Rich Pen's a 0 
chrome finish brilliant the build quality on the rich pen i would say is better than the sotar because these are basically eye so the finishes on eye are precision they're really nice the chromes on them is really nice triggers are nice all put together really really well nice slick body on this very light and very comfortable to the hand i'll take the crown cap off this and we'll drop some paint in it and as i say the beauty of these you are putting droplets of painting just pull that through so we've got the rich pen 1128 apollo now these are hard to come by now i picked this one up from everything airbrush and now they've stopped selling the rich pen so whether you'd have to go to a main rich pen seller i don't know because i've not seen any of these on the market since i got one so we'll do the same thing on the shading and again guys the trigger on these are at the end of the day they are our water now the rich pen is clogging up <laughs> clogging up it shades as soft and as nice but this seems like it's struggling with the paint yeah it is it's not as once you get the paint running in it you're okay the trigger is as responsive but the sotar just copes with it the sotar feels a lot more freer at the front end on the point two on the badger it just feels like there is no problem with that paint whatever paint you put through it just seems like it flows so nice the ridge pen i think you just got to tweak your paint slightly but once you get your paint tweaked this is flowing nice now you get your hairlines you can get the hairlines you can do with the sotar but the sotar does it that little bit easier a lot easier but both will give you these hairlines a lovely brush guys it really is I can't knock the rich pen I really can't I mean this rich pen is probably the third third time I've ever picked this up and as I say I only use it on a review so it's practically brand new everything's tight on it you can feel everything's tight on it when you use it but very responsive on the trigger I'm just touching that trigger and you are getting the same style of dagger strokes and lines as what the sotar does but the sotar just does it a little bit easier it really does you'll notice that if you was here now holding these brushes and you you can just feel the paint flows in the sotar just it wants to come out it's like it's just straight out with this it's like you know you have to go a little bit thinner on your paint but once you've got your paint dialed in on this as you can see it gets it gets super fine down and it's a detail brush at the end of the day and it's doing what it is set out to do it's them details guys you've got your full view again because you've got no cut or side cut full view very comfortable I, I think out the two I prefer the body of this in your hand than the Sotar but trigger and how this thing puts the paint down it's just it's just an incredible brush but if I spent a day with the rich pen I'd probably change my thoughts because this is just a brilliant brush as well it really is a nice brush it just oozes eye water it just feels like you've got an eye water in your hand it really does definitely on trigger so that's the rich pen 
Apollo 112A. I think they do a B as well, which has got the cup, a little cup to the top. And you can get the Sotar as well, which has got, has got a cup to the top as well. So you can get this, the point two with the cup if you prefer a cup. But I prefer using these. After painting with the Sotar for a couple of days, I've not wasted oddly any paint because we all do it as airbrushes. When you've got a cup on the top or a big side cup, you end up putting loads of paint in when you only need like two drops and then you're chucking that paint away, getting your next colour in and you go through a lot of paint. I found I saved a lot of paint using one of these brushes because you are putting minimal in the little reservoir to the top. So I'll leave you at the end of the video with a little look at what I think on these brushes. You'll see like a little point sort of score on these brushes. It will show you the prices of the brushes as well, but both recommended, they're both really good. But for me, this sort of pips it on trigger and just the way it flows for a point two. I didn't do a test on dropping the pressure down. That's running at 25 PSI, but believe you me, this thing, they both will go down, but I've ran this Sotar at around 10 and under, and it just performed again. And it just, it doesn't seem like it clogs. It just keeps working and working. So I hope you've enjoyed the video on the look at the Sotar and the Rich Pen. And I will see you in the next one, guys. Stick around to the end and you'll see my little sort of conclusion on these two brushes. So thanks for watching. Cheers. Mm -hmm.